one. Uh, let's see, Evan, do I have uh, hosting ability? Yep, I gave you co-hosting. You should be good now. Let me know if you have any issues. All right. Let's see if we can. All right. Do you see the the slideshow? Yep. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Well, I guess we'll we'll go ahead and get started in the interest of time. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerome Horn, and I'm the Director of Transit Leadership Development at Transit Center in New York City. And uh, I'm delighted to share this space this afternoon to talk to you a little bit about the work I'm doing at Transit Center, what our organization is, and our thoughts on leadership development for transit. So before we dive in today, I want everyone to think about the best leaders you've known. What is it about them that made them great? So keep that in mind as we go through the presentation. So first, I want to humanize myself. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with me, um, you know, I, um, I just have a degree, a bachelor's degree in music education, uh, but I am now, uh, you know, working in the transit space and, and working at, at Transit Center. And, uh, you know, that my career journey has been very interesting, and uh, I've had a lot of uh, great opportunity to grow and expand. So, uh, this really started back when I was 10 years old. I sent an email, which you can see uh, a little bit of uh, to the right of the screen, to the CEO of the transit system in Baltimore, where I grew up. And I asked him, how can I get your job when I grow up? And he responded. And he took the time out of his day to write a personalized response. And you have to imagine for a 10-year-old kid to have someone do that. That was really impactful. And, you know, a, one sign of a good leader is taking the time out of the day to do something that might be, you know, seem small or seem insignificant, but really, you know, has a big impact. Uh, so I, prior to coming to Transit Center, spent five uh, wonderful years at Indigo, which is the transit agency in Indianapolis. And my time there was, was really kind of instrumental in my career growth and trajectory in the transit industry where... I landed there at the right time. We had a lot going on. We passed a transit referendum. We opened the new downtown transit center. We did a bus system redesign. We opened the, the nation's first battery electric BRT. And we, we had so many other things going on. So it was a great experience to, to get in and really kind of learn uh, trial by fire. And so, you know, one of the things that we're looking to do in terms of leadership is experience Ending that definition of what leadership is and the opportunities that are afforded to people, not just those who are at the top of agencies, but you know, really thinking about middle management and people that are in lower positions having opportunity and exposure uh, to move forward within the industry. And so while I was there, uh, you know, had amazing time to be on the news, go to national conferences. Uh, there's a photo of me at the middle at the bottom meeting the... Uh... Does anybody else hear that sound? Yes. No, Lee, please mute. There we go. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Anthony Fox, one of the, our former secretaries of transportation in the Obama administration, which was really exciting for me. So a little bit more about Transit Center. So we are a private foundation based in New York, but our focus is national. And our mission is that we work to improve public transit in ways that make cities more just, sustainable, and prosperous. And we do that in a few different ways. We have our different divisions. We have our research division, uh, lots of qualitative and quantitative analysis and reports. We have our advoc advocacy and organizing division, our agency practice division, which is focused on a lot of policy, and then leadership development, our newest division, and what I am in the process of, of starting and creating. So at Transit Center, We've been very policy oriented. Um, you know, one of our most recent reports was called Equity in Practice uh, that just came out at the end of last year. And that's a great report. It's really for practitioners, uh, but even a great tool for advocates in the transit industry to understand how do transit agencies actually operationalize equity instead of it just being a buzzword? What are some of those best practices and case studies to make that a reality? Uh, one of our latest videos is called The Legacy of Racism in Transit, which I actually had the honor of being the narrator for. And we really talk and go deep. Uh, in fact, that video features uh, Jared Johnson, who we've already heard from, and uh, Christoph Spieler, who you might hear from in some of the later sessions. Uh, my colleague and our director of research, Stephen Higashade, published a book a few years ago, ago called Better Buses, Better Cities, which we think is a great tool for advocates especially to learn some of the in and outs of how to be a better transit advocate and how transit agencies and how the system and bureaucracy work. And then finally, the other work we've done is we give out grants. We give out a lot of grants to policy, uh, to transit advocacy organizations. And uh, the picture in the bottom left kind of shows uh, Ride New Orleans, who is one of our grantees that uh, won a pretty great 
um, victory recently by ge uh, getting a bus system redesign and kind of getting the transit agency right sized and hitting in the right direction and really with a focus on e on equity. And so we're really great to see that. Or we're really happy to see that. But one of the things that we have not been focused on is the people or the human capital aspect of transit. At the end of the day, you know, who is leading, how they lead, and what power they have and share really dictates how successful agencies are going to be. So challenges. Uh, you know, this is not a comprehensive or exhaustive list of all the challenges facing transit agencies, but, you know, some of the biggest ones are that a lot of agencies are still very rigid bureaucracy. Uh, there tends to be a lot of working in silos. There's sort of a command and control mindset, a lot of rules by the book mentality, which is great for safety um, and, and uh, operations, but might not be the best for planning and community engagement. Sometimes there's a lack of clear upward career paths. Um, there can be disconnection from riders. This is why it's really important to have transit staff and transit boards that actually use the system. Uh, compensation structures, competing employers, you know, a lot of times transit agencies can be difficult places to work. Uh, and we lose a lot of talent and retention to the private sector and other, other places uh, where they're able to pay more money and have different work styles. However, as, as you know, big as these challenges are, I, I always like to say, you know, it always, uh, this great quote from Nelson Mandela says, you know, it always seems impossible until it's done. And I love looking at the word impossible because I like to break it down into I'm possible. And that's kind of my personal mantra of, of moving forward with things that seem insurmountable. So as we transition into talking about leadership and how we transform agency leadership, uh, I want to highlight uh, a few people um, that are, are doing that in the field right now. Uh, so the first person you see in the left is Monica tibbetts nutt and she recently served on the MBTA board and the Mass DOT board, and she was a regular transit rider, particularly on the bus, and a big advocate for bus riders. She also advocated for the creation of the customer technology department at MBTA. Uh, her time on the board was just really instrumental in, in helping to try to rescue the MBTA and, and right-size the ship and move things forward. And uh, she's just a great example of what a transit agency board member should be, someone who uses the service, who has lived experience that informs the decisions that she makes. Another person in the top middle here, this is Cam Hardy. Uh, he is a, a big transit advocate. Uh, and he was really instrumental in leading the Better Bus Coalition in Cincinnati, uh, where they pushed for uh, a transit referendum that passed uh, and really improving bus service in Cincinnati. And in fact, recently they've launched 24 seven service on a few of, of their lines. And Cam is a great example of what a transit advocate can be. And then finally, on the right here, we have Inez Evans, who is the CEO of Indigo in Indianapolis, who I had the pleasure of working with. And it's really important um, to, to note that out of uh, the you know, few thousand transit systems that exist in the United States, uh, there are only nine Black women that run transit agencies. So leadership is not. <laughs> leadership is not about yielding unlimited power. It is not about talking down to people. It is not about talking to people. I'm sure you could all think of maybe the worst boss you've ever had, the worst leader you've ever encountered, and think about some of the things uh, that uh, you know made that situation true. So at its simplest definition, we like to say at Transit Center that leadership is influence. Uh, and that influence hopefully is a positive one that can impact other people creating you know, a better you, a better organization, and a better industry. Um, this photo here, you know, we see someone who uh, is near and dear to many of us in the transit world who unfortunately left New York City, but Andy Byford served uh, at a very short time as the uh, president or, or in charge of New York City Transit, but he was very influential. And uh, he was really an example of a leader and more leaders that we want to see as someone who used the system, someone who you know, uh, kind of w went down through all the barriers and hierarchy of the agency, talking to riders, talking to operators, and really trying to make the system better, uh, even in his short amount of time that he was there. And I, I want to really stress that once again, you know, anyone can be a leader, regardless of your title or position. So as we kind of work to inform our leadership program and the changes we want to see in the industry, uh, leaders are not just CEOs. Um, you know, bus operators and mechanics can certainly be leaders because once again, it's about having positive influence, but it's also about breaking down structures and barriers that allow employees at any level to
to have a say and have input and have that input considered and matter. One example of that at DND Go, we had our bus operators and mechanics actually design a custom uh, you know, bus operator barrier to protect them from safe, for safety. And it was kind of a team of people that got together. They raised the idea with agency leadership and the agency leadership thought it was great. And so they you know, helped produce them in-house. And that was just a great way of understanding that leadership can come from the middle out, the bottom up, the outside in, and not just the top down. So we want to see people that are inclusive in their decision making, meaning has this person thought about the lived experiences of other people, the ability levels of other people, people who may not look like them or talk like them or sound like them. Uh, we want to see leaders that are growth oriented. Is this a person that is just concerned about themselves and moving themselves up the leadership chain? Or are they also reaching the ladder back down to bring other people up with them and build the organization? We want to see people that are change agents, people that are transformation and reformation minded about the transit industry. We know that there's a lot of change that needs to happen in order for the industry to continue to survive and hopefully thrive. We want to see people that are responsive to the rider perspective and broader public interest. This means we want to see leaders that once again, are actually using their system that understand the struggles of riders and once again, really thinking about being inclusive in their decision-making. Obviously, we need people to be effective at what they do. We wanna see results happen. And one of the most important things is we wanna see leadership that represents the people that they serve. Now, we know, uh, and this information comes from APTA, the American Public Transportation Association, that nearly 60% of managerial positions at transit agencies are held by white people, despite white people only representing 40% of the ridership. While people of color are underrepresented in almost every category, uh, despite making up the majority of people who ride transit. So the leaders we wish to see. Now, you know, I could have this this slide. We could put a lot more people on here. Uh, these are just three prime examples of people out in the field that are that are doing great work. Uh, so first, starting at the top left, this is Stephanie Wiggins, who is still fairly new to being the CEO of LA Metro, and this is a big deal. Once again, as I said, there are only nine black women that are leading transit agencies in the United States, and so to have someone at one of the largest in the country, um, that's important. Uh, then in the middle here, we see from the MTA uh, in New York, our chief accessibility officer, Cuemo Arroyo. And the great thing about him is that he, his lived experience as a person that has mobility challenges really informs the work that he does. He can see through a lens that other people may not be able to. And that's really important, once again, for representation. And then finally, another person that is a really great leader uh, on the right here is Alicia Tros. She is the chief communications officer at BART. And one of the great things about her, she's really taken the communication style of the agency and taken it to the next level, particularly if you ever interact with Bard on Twitter, you know that they can be sassy, they have a lot of attitude, uh, but it's a great way of engaging with the public and kind of dismissing this notion that government agencies need to be rigid. Um, at this quote that I have on here, you know, there's an old saying that you cannot be what you cannot see. And once again, who is in charge, how they lead, that matters. And when you can see people that look like you and think like you and have lived experience like you leading, that can be inspiring and, and inspire you to also lead. So there are other programs that exist in the transit industry today that are focused on leadership. Um, the Eno Transportation Center has a great mid-manager and executive level program. NACTO, the National Association for City Transportation Officials has a leadership program. Uh, COMPTO, which is, the, which is the Coalition of Minority Transportation Officials, has leadership programs. And APTA, American Public Transportation Association, has some great programs, including one that I'm in myself, their Emerging Leader Program. And there's nothing wrong with these programs that exist. These are all primarily for people that work at transit agencies or city departments of transportation. Uh, but they're really focused on solely mostly the individual and how that individual can rise up in their career. And what we want to do and what we want to try to do a little bit differently is fill in that gap of how do we equip people to be change agents uh, inside their organizations in the industry to move things forward. So Transit Center, one of the first steps into leadership development for us was our Women Changing Transportation Program, which some of you may be familiar with. This program started in 2019 as an effort to foster community among women in the transportation field. And this program includes women from uh, that are advocates, all the way down from operators to maintenance staff, operations staff, and people in the C-suite. So it really kind of brings a bunch of people together. Um, 
it started, uh, uh, you know, as a mentorship program, which small groups of women that were really sharing their experiences and building uh, up the up and, and really working with each other to build up their power. And in 2022, this, this segment is going to continue to evolve. It will include an external campaign and a platform that will uplift women in the field and advocate for more and for a more inclusive transportation sector. So be on the lookout for that. So in terms of Transit Center and where we're going to start focusing our efforts is one, uh, we're going to start our own, a, a different mentorship program. Uh, this is also going to be small groups and we're going to open it up to people that work both in transit and transit advocates. And we want to really have them uh, get access to leaders in the field where they can have this really small group of no more than four people and be able to talk about, you know, things in, in a curated content, whether it's dealing with challenges, you know, communicating as a leader, uh, moving up as a leader. Uh, then we're gonna have our dynamic leadership events where we highlight people in the field that we think are living by the ideals that we wanna see. In fact, uh, so the picture you see is Deborah Johnson, who is uh, also another one of those nine black women who's fairly new to leading RTD in Denver. And uh, we think she's doing a great job in terms of inheriting a lot of, uh, you know, challenging situations and trying to make sure uh, that she writes the ship and, and leads things forward. But these program, these dynamic leadership events will feature panel discussions, we'll have podcasts, um, and we'll hopefully get to a point where we're doing in-person events in the latter half of the year. And then another thing we're doing is a qualitative leadership study. So we want to understand uh, what is happening at transit agencies that have seen a change at who's leading at the top in recent years. Uh, there have been a record number of women that have taken over uh, as general managers and CEOs at transit agencies. And we're just curious to learn and see if we get any data behind uh, what that has meant, if anything, for the agency. Now, I want to say, be very explicit and clear, you know, just having a person of color or a woman or someone uh, from a different identity in charge does not automatically equate to things that are, you know, things are going to change for the agency. Obviously, it's one thing to look the part, but we also want to see results. And then the other things we're going to focus on is um, uh, best practices in transit leadership brief, where as we go through this first year of this program, we're going to catalog some of the outstanding people in the industry. We're going to look at some of the ways they lead and the, and the methods that they use uh, and kind of publish that in a small report towards the end of this year and the beginning of next year. And one thing that I'm really excited about and I think is extremely important is the BIPOC advocacy cohort. So as I mentioned, Transit Center, we have our advocacy and organizing team and advocates are a huge part of better transit and creating better transit. We need more advocates that can help us win the fight for better transit. And that's something that people do not uh, speak up enough about. You know, We have plenty of content about the technical features of, of transit. We can talk about the different Metro trains in China all day and what we would do if we had unlimited money. But at the end of the day, we live in a reality where we need people who know how to communicate with elected officials, people that know how to impact uh, and run campaigns and organize other people and so we're really excited to, to kind of bring, uh, bring together this BIPOC cohort and kind of do some training, some education, and push forward with expanding our reach of transit advocacy uh, in the United States. And just a little hint, moving forward in the program, we have some medium-term and long-term goals, but one of our next steps will also be to create an agency peer-to-peer -peer exchange, where we take folks from different cities to other transit properties to see how they're run and learn from each other and kind of build networks. Uh, and this is standard practice internationally, where a lot of transit agencies in other countries will go to other countries or other systems to see how they're run, because getting that exposure and seeing how other agencies tackle problems can be really helpful uh, to moving things forward. So anyway, that's a little bit about our leadership program and what we plan to do at Transit Center. Uh, once again, uh, it's been an honor to present and I'm happy to take questions. And uh, really, I wanna get some feedback. You know, This is a new program for us and things will evolve and change over time, uh, but uh, it's been a pleasure to present. Uh, there's my contact information on the slide. Uh, and if you wanna know more about Transit Center and the information, uh, what we're working on, stay tuned to our website as uh, in the coming months, we'll be releasing an application for our mentorship program and more information about our BIPOC advocacy cohort. So thank you. Is there time for questions? Yeah, there's plenty of time, go ahead. Okay, thank yeah. you. So, I'm wondering, did you get to study, 
to study abroad and um, what do you think the role of them um, of them um, of them um, study abroad has to play for them in creating a new class of them um, of transit leaders in in north america i feel that we could really benefit from not just see seeing the capital infrastructure in place the capital and operational infrastructure in place in in other countries but also to learn and work directly with the with the people who who brought it into existence and keep it running yeah great question um you know, as i mentioned one of our medium and long term goals would be to um, kind of have some groups that travel internationally and learn from best practices. Obviously, you know, we know there's a lot of great planning and construction and other things that, that a lot of other countries do better than we do in the United States. Uh, but our primary focus, you know, really here is just kind of about, you know, sort of more about agencies changing policies. And also, you know, there are best practices and leadership that can come from outside of the transit industry. You know, some of the things that, that we'll also be looking at is just other, indi other industries in general and how they, um, you know, structure their leadership programs. But I certainly think international pra best practices definitely has a role to play. And that's something that I hope to get to uh, in, the, in the next few years in the program. Yeah, but I, yeah, I'd really like to then, I'd really like to see a lot more them them us people go get them get public transport internships abroad or go do masters abroad yeah i think that would be great and that's definitely something we will be looking into any other questions hello uh my name is sylvia i, I live in canada in, in brampton ontario we're always happy i'm on the city's trans advisory committee Pretty sure the transit agency is always happy to show people around. We are a city that uh, is almost entirely suburban sprawl. Uh, the the city has a hundred times has almost a hundred times as many people as it did in 1951. It's all car sprawl. Um, we recent um, in 2006 we redesigned our bus system to a grid, and uh, 2006 through 2018 we've averaged. So for a lot of cities that are on like a public land survey system with long straight roads from how uh, the land was plotted out from the Homestead Act and those kind of things, um, Brampton can be pretty useful. If you have a U US passport, you can stay in Canada up to 180 days. It's quite easy um, to, to come and visit. And we also speak English as our native language. So that also reduces the barrier. And if you can show people Look, here is the city that has our nice, chunky eight-lane arterial roads. We'll be like, oh, okay, that looks familiar. Yeah, well, thank you for your comment. And yeah, you know, when, when we talk about international, I think a lot of times there's a lot of preference given to uh, going over to Europe and Asia. But you know, I think closer to home, you know, up north in Canada, certainly there are some differences, but also some things that we can definitely learn for much closer to us. And even you know, down in Mexico and South America, I think there's a lot of great stuff going on with transit. Um, but, you know, I, I, the reason why, you know, we're, we're structuring this program, uh, one, you know, we're still in a pandemic uh, and we don't know what what's going to happen in the next few months. So we're really trying to focus on what we know we can do. And it's also a big financial cost to take a group of people internationally. And, you know, some of this leadership really, you know, making better leaders, a lot of that, you know, once again, that that is like, you know, more of a philosophy on leadership and things that that we can change that you know don't necessarily have to do with you know how we design a transit system or how we you know uh you know plan bus routes these are more like human-centered actual qualities of people and we can learn lessons about how to be better leaders um through a lot of different things yeah. any other I questions i have a question um, so as someone who has just taken their first um, position as leading others within a transit org, do you have any resources for the short term to start with while these other things spin up? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, the first thing I would say, and this is actually something 
that I got a lot of great feedback from when I was doing some research uh, as I'm putting this program together. I talked to a lot of people across transit agencies all, all around the country, large, small, rural, urban, everywhere in between. And one of the big gaps was that people that are new to being leaders, there, there isn't a lot out there. Um, and so I, you know, some of the other things that I didn't quite mention is there's look at, you know, a potential partnership with uh, young professionals in transportation, um, YPT, uh, looking at how can we help people that are earlier in their careers by providing resources and networking and mentoring. Uh, and, and, you know, how do you really grow into becoming a leader? So uh, that's another piece that uh, hopefully I'll have more information about in the coming months here, but it certainly is a gap that's not being filled. So um, it de definitely something that I hope to be able to address through this program. Any other questions? Looks like we have five minutes. Yeah, hi. Um, I wanted to just comment and, and say how important it was. Uh, I work in a non-transit state agency um and how important i think something like this would be especially just developing skills um interagency wise and and talking and knowing that everybody is on the same page so i look forward to seeing the work that the transit center can accomplish in that sense too and your work as well well thank you so much and yeah i think you're absolutely right as as i as i said a lot of agencies sometimes tend to work in silos there isn't great communication and there's a lot of soft skills, just communication and being able to read the room and emotional intelligence that really goes into being a leader and uh, things that we hope to touch on in our curriculum. Uh, uh, Jerome, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, chime in briefly with a question. Uh, first and foremost, excellent presentation as always. Um, this is Dave Sorrell over at UC Berkeley. And I think one of the challenges being, you know, I, I as a department head is, identifying and working with the pipeline of trying to get future leaders, especially those that are women, uh, non-binary, um, people of color. How do you think, or could you be able to quickly identify what is the best way to kind of bridge that gap in order for us to get the necessary leaders that represent our writers? Yeah, that's an excellent question and, and a big challenge. I, I won't profess to have the answer or the total answer, but one of the things is one, we, we, we need to keep raising awareness. We need to talk more about it. We need to be explicit about it and we need to put it out there. Um, and you know, the, we're not, we're still not having enough conversations about that. You know, part of the, the reason why, uh, uh, you know, we started the Women Changing Transportation Program at Transit Center is really for that because there wasn't a forum for women to come together and talk about some of the unique challenges that they face. And this is true for any, you know, marginalized population or, or individuals, um, um, you know, people of color, as you mentioned, non-binary, queer populations. So, um, you know, one of the, one of my aims with this program is to highlight different people in the field that do show up in those identities and talk about them and some of their challenges. But I think the more we can get the awareness, the more we can see these people uh, doing the work, um, you know, the better it will be for raising the awareness and getting more people cognizant of thinking about um, thinking about those things. Looks like I might have time for one more question. Anybody else? It looks like Morgan's had her hand up waiting patiently. Go ahead. Thank you, Jer um, thank you, whoever called me on. I appreciate it. Um, hi, Jerome. Thank you so much for the talk today. Um, one really fast question. Um, I'm feeling really pumped uh, by, by the lecture I just saw, and I'm kind of wondering uh, if there's something that I want to go out and do right now um, to sort of get involved uh, and have more relationship capacity in my own community. What would you recommend? Yeah, well, so if you want to go out and get involved in your community, especially about transit advocacy, the first thing I'd recommend is, you know, um, we we, uh, we have a report called Winning Transit at, uh, that's available on transitcenter.org. And it's really kind of a field guide for how advocates can strategize. And it goes through some of the strategies of working with elected officials, how you organize people, bring them together, some of the communication strategies. Um, as I mentioned, the book Better Buses, Better Cities is also a really great resource in learning how to be an advocate and some of the successful campaigns that have existed around the country. And uh, I'm really excited uh, to hear, Morgan, about, about you wanting to do that. I, I've, I've seen you give a few other 